Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Word of the Day podcast, where I, Jamie Silva, attempt to explain useful words pleasantly. Today's word is not. Now, this form of not is not not as in not, with a K at the beginning, nor is it not as in not without a K at the beginning. No, not of these words is the form of not that I am going to talk about. Mm. Uh, this is this is pretty confusing. Need some help? Oh, uh, yes. Uh, thank you. I, I really think I do. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the program today's talented voice actor, Della. Adela, uh, thank you so much for coming on the show. Not a problem, Jamie. Folks, the confusion here is that there are actually several words out there that sound like today's word, but are actually quite different. So to clarify, we are not talking about the sorts of knots you tie in your shoelaces, nor the sort of knot used to reference something you are not doing, such as not talking about irrelevant forms of knot. Well, thank you, Della. Uh, that is better, but how about we just spell it? Today's word is N-A-U-G-H-T, not. And this word means nothing. What do you mean it means nothing? Every word has to mean something. No, no, uh, sorry. It means nothing. Like, it's synonymous with, it means the exact same thing as the word nothing. See, look, I have the online definition right here. It says, and I quote, nothing. Okay, so if I wanted to say there's nothing I enjoy more than pogo sticks, I could also say there's not I enjoy more than pogo sticks? Right, yeah. Uh, Same deal for saying, like, hey, uh, there's nothing to eat in the fridge. This would become there's not to eat in the fridge. Now, this word is very simple, very easy to insert in a lot of common phrases and sayings. And we've got some examples for you right here. Uh, Della, why don't you lead us off? Move along. There's not to see here. Very good. How about all or not? Not ventured, not gained. Those who learn not from history are doomed to repeat it. Not is certain in life, but death in taxes. There's not new under the sun. The hit TV show Seinfeld is affectionately known as a show about not. The list goes on. Well, not our list. Yeah, our list is over. But you know, people always say the list goes on right at the very point at which the list does not, in fact, continue. Kind of like how whenever people say not to be rude, but then they always go on to say something rude. Precisely. Now, in the 14th and 15th centuries, not was another word for evil or an evil act, which is where we get the word naughty, a meaning, of course, prone to mischief or poor behavior. But only poor behavior, not like super bad behavior. Not also used to commonly refer to the number zero, which of course lines right up with the concept of not as in nothing. That's right. Now, let's talk a little bit about usage. Here at the Word of the Day podcast, as you all probably know, we only feature useful words, words that you could easily fit into normal conversations all the time, without sounding weird or pretentious or needlessly melodramatic. Well, by those standards, this word, I grant you, is a little off the beaten path, as it does sound a touch theatrical, or at least intentionally literary. Not is an antiquated version of nothing, see? And as such, it can turn mundane statements about everyday situations into grand, philosophical-sounding pronouncements. And, since this is an old-timey word, it works best when accompanied by other old-timey, highbrow words, which, in my mind at least, is fun. Judge for yourself via some examples. And we're going to do things a little bit differently this time. So in these examples, first we'll do a normal sentence and then a fun version of that sentence. Della, go for it. Example number one, normal option. Terry's sprinting was all for nothing as the bus pulled away from the curb just as he arrived at the stop. Now the fun option. Alas, Terry's sprinting was all for naught, for behold, his desired conveyance was at that very moment withdrawing from the station. And just so you know, conveyance is pretty much just a fancy word for a mode of transportation, like a bike, car, or bus. Example number two, normal option. Within minutes, nothing was left on the snack table except a few unwanted celeries and baby carrots. Fun option. Within minutes, not remained of the hors d'oeuvres but a smattering of rejected vegetables. Example number three, normal option. Amy always thought Dan was nothing but a blowhard. Fun option. Amy's opinion was unshakable on the subject. Dan was not but a bloviating fool. Now, some might consider these fun options needlessly verbose or fancy, and maybe they'd be right, depending on the situation. But if used judiciously and sparingly, I feel like a more poetic and archaic word like not is a great addition to anyone's vocabulary. Absolutely. Consider the company you put yourself in by using not. 
that of some of the most accomplished writers of all time. So, if we dip into Moby Dick, here's what we see. Quote, On behalf of the dignity of whaling, I would fain advance not but substantiated facts. Unquote. And fain, in this context, basically just means prefer. Right. Now, what the author, Mr. Melville, is trying to say here is that he prefers to stick to the concrete facts when discussing the practice of whale hunting, or whaling as it is also known. Ironically, he then follows this statement by enthusiastically straying from the concrete facts and indulging in some wild speculation about the use of whale oil in the coronation ceremonies of monarchs. This is one of those not-to-be-rude-but situations, only here it's more like not-to-speculate-but. Well, how about this, from our good friend Will Shakespeare, who wrote in the prologue to Romeo and Juliet? Okay, let's see here. Two households both alike in dignity, in fair Verona, blah, 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 pair of star-crossed lovers. Okay, 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 here we are. The fearful passage of their death-marked love and the continuance of their parents' rage, which, but their children's end, naught could remove. Basically, what Shakespeare is talking about is these two families who hated each other and could only reconcile and be friends once their respective children died. That's pretty messed up. It sure is, uh, but they don't call it a tragedy for nothing. Now, as long as we're on the subject of not or nothing, we simply must touch on the word ought as well. Like, I ought to get some roller skates? Uh, nope, sorry, try again. How about the last decade, the aughts, as opposed to the 90s or 80s? Sorry, still no. Ought, spelled A-U-G-H-T, which you'll notice is just not without the N, means anything. It means anything you want it to mean? Ah, dear, not again. No, it just has the same meaning as the word anything. And anywhere you would say anything, you could say ought instead. So the question, is there anything good on TV right now, becomes, is there ought good on TV right now? So, if there are no rules, does that mean ought goes? Exactly. Anything goes, ought goes, same thing. Also, you could say ought that can go wrong will go wrong. And ought is better than nothing. Indeed. Uh, But a note of caution here. Unless you're super adventurous, I wouldn't use ought in everyday conversation. Not, to be clear, is acceptable, mainly because you can generally tell from the context what it means. But with ought, it's just way less certain. Like, if you asked, is there aught left in the cookie jar, even though the proper response, if it were empty, would be no, not remains in the cookie jar, I'm afraid very few people would pick up on your intent. And using obscure words to confuse people on purpose is frowned upon in polite society, and for good reason. Is there aught nice you could say about the practice? No, Della, I'm afraid I have naught but harsh things to say about it. Well, I think that is going to do it for today's show. Uh, Thank you, Della, so much for joining me. Your assistance was most useful. Happy to help. All right. It seems to me there is not left to do in this episode other than express my gratitude to you all for listening. And if there is aught that you wish to write us about, such as a word you'd like us to feature, an account of your attempt to use one of the words from this show in your daily life, you can always tell us about it by sending a message to the show email, which is WOTD podcast at gmail.com this has been the word of the day podcast i'm your host jamie silva saying so long from the rav studios thanks so much for listening and we'll see you next time